people learn, then clearly we're going to maximise their learning potential and provide an environment that's conducive to their various, uh, to the very differences. So, for example, I think people learn really with four key factors. One is people need to be motivated. Um, secondly, they need practice in doing something. Thirdly, they need feedback on how they're doing. And then finally, to reflect on all those, uh, on that feedback. So how do we do that? Firstly, by being motivated. Well, I think we should give students more of a choice of what they do. Uh, if we enjoy doing something, then we're much more likely to be motivated. Secondly, we need to build into the curriculum that practice. Not just give the lecture and move on, but where are we giving students that opportunity? Thirdly, feedback, to train students in giving themselves feedback and to receive feedback from their peers. And then finally, to reflect on that, to close that circle. So they need to be motivated to have practice, to have feedback, and then to reflect on that. The first example I want to give is where I was asked to give um, a lecture on how to give a presentation to 80 engineering students, including some international students. I could have easily just given a one hour lecture and they could have gone away and I could have thought, okay, they've got it. But I decided to do a one hour lecture on how to give a presentation, but then use the rest of the day to get the students actively involved. So while I was giving the presentation, I asked them to come up with a list of criteria for how they would rate me. I then asked for volunteers from the students to give a one minute presentation on any topic of their choice so that they were motivated. It could have been my best holiday or it could have been something related to engineering. At the end of that presentation, we asked that student to reflect on how they thought they'd done before their peers gave them some feedback. Groups then modified their criteria as they realised they didn't all apply and were not appropriate. And more students came forward to volunteer, so they were practising that skill. And at the end of the day, these 80 engineering students agreed a list of criteria that they could all follow. The following four weeks, the students went away, they practised, they had feedback, they gave feedback from themselves as well as from their peers, they reflected on that feedback, and at the end of that time, they all gave their presentations. I would say that was a, a good way of them being actively involved in their own, own learning. The second example I want to give is using learning styles as a developmental tool. So running a workshop with some South African academics, uh, we applied and went through the learning styles questionnaire. And one group realised that they were all very low on reflection turned out they were all physios and what they had recognised was they were all so busy out there doing the physio that they hadn't met to reflect on how they were doing. And so as a consequence of that they put some dates in the diary for brief meetings so they could share their experiences and learn from each other. What we need to do is use a variety of different methods so that we're engaging with different learning styles and I think it's very important that we demonstrate by walking the talk so that we're seeing as modelling good practice that we actually believe in. I think we need to involve students much more in their own learning. They need to be able to um, come up with criteria, they need to be able to reflect on their own achievements, their strengths and weaknesses but also we need to give them practice um, in giving feedback to their peers. These are well-known lifelong learning skills that are so valuable to them in whatever field they enter when they leave university. My question to you is to think about a lecture, a seminar, a workshop that you've given recently or plan to give and think about how you might change it to make it more active so that students are more involved, so that you're thinking about the different learning styles. Or alternatively, you could think about a one hour lecture and say, how can you really be creative that instead of you standing at the front giving that one hour lecture, 
how can you more actively involve students to take into account their different learning styles and their needs.